Hey guys, so I wanted to create a video explaining how to use the Grin Technologies Motor Simulator, which has been a very helpful tool for figuring out exactly what type of motor to get, as well as comparing uh, different motors. Um, I, I keep referring back to this website because I've spent countless hours on it, and uh, a big portion of that was on this motor simulator which honestly at first was a bit overwhelming um, given all the different curves uh, on this chart. Um, when really uh, the first thing you should pay attention to is this bottom section here, this bottom uh, set of charts. Um, uh, you see three different tables here. I'm oh, sorry, bottom set of tables. Um, in this case, uh, on the, the, the far left one, you could see how much power is going into the motor, and this is how much power you're actually using. Uh, so you can see here the efficiency of the motor is about 82%. So 82% of that 640 watts is going into uh, the, 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 the motor itself. Um, and uh, it is making the wheel spin at 329 revolutions per minute, which given that it's a 26 inch wheel, translates to uh, about 41 kilometers per hour. You could switch it to miles per hour if that's easier for you. Um, so this motor at full throttle on a 0% grade with 100 watts of uh, human power will uh, allow you to go 25.6 miles per hour. And given this battery, it will allow you to go for 34 miles and it will never overheat. Um, uh, you can actually shift uh, this line here, and you could see at this point, um, uh, you're going to be going 16 miles an hour, but you're also going to be accelerating at 1.35 miles per hour per second. Um, and you could see the temperature actually goes up of this motor. As you keep going down, the temperature will climb. Um, so in this case, it will overheat in 19 minutes, but clearly, you're accelerating here, so you should eventually get to the higher, more efficient speeds. Um, so at full throttle, you're at max efficiency um, at these high speeds. Um, so, so that's how you could look and see what, what speeds you're gonna get for different motors. So uh, for instance, if I plug in my motor, um, the 3525 is, um, uh, 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 the motor I got, and uh, 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 this motor is um, uh, wound so that it will spin slower uh, for the same voltage or input throttle, but it should have uh, significantly more torque um, than the 3540. Uh, um, so the top speed with a 36 volt battery is 19 miles per hour, but I actually ended up going with a 48 volt battery which increases the top speed or, or the speed on flat to 24 miles per hour uh, with a 37 mile range. Uh, and this is with an 83% efficiency. So it's, it's, it's fairly efficient. Um, uh, so um, what you can do is uh, you can change um, the battery, you could change the motor type, you can compare two motors. So if I wanted to compare my Crystallite to, let's say the TDCM motor, uh, which has the internal gear hub, I could go in and pull up the TDCM. Um, this plus Staterade, Staterade is a really cool uh, liquid. It has some kind of magnetic particles that allow the, the heat to transfer from uh, the inside of the motor to the outside of the motor where it's going to be cooled by the air. So, so it actually uh, significantly reduces the, um, uh, uh, the, 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 the temperature of the motor. Um, you can actually see here the TDCM at full throttle will go faster at 26.5 miles per hour, uh, but it's going to have uh, significantly lower uh, efficiency. And uh, given the same battery, you are actually going to lose a lot of range. So not only is it a lot less efficient, 
um, but uh, um, because you're going at a faster speed, um, uh, you're using a lot more power. Of course, you could reduce the throttle. Um, so that's something that you can do here. For instance, let's reduce it. We just reduced it to a pretty at 86% throttle. It will be going at a similar speed, in which case it's going to re regain a lot of the range. Um, it's going to be slightly lower efficiency, but um, uh, it's going to be fairly comparable. Um, uh, but where I think uh, the, the crystallite really shines is if you're going up a hill. So if we want to increase the grade to, let's say, seven and a half degrees, which is not too uncommon, um, uh, you're going to notice that full throttle, um, uh, uh, you're going going to be going at a, a at a very high speed, and you're only going to be able to go about 13 miles. Um, so I will most likely want to reduce the throttle um, so that I'm not using as much um, as much battery power, and I could I could you know almost double the distance that I go. Um, and you could you know play around with the throttle and see, for instance, at these lower speeds. The uh, the crystallite motor is at seventy percent efficiency versus sixty uh, percent efficiency for the TDCM. Um, so playing around with uh, this motor simulator allows you to figure out how much range you're going to have. Um, it's also going to allow you to look at how much amps the motor is drawing, um, and that's going to decide what type of controller you might need. In certain circumstances, you might need to have a higher amp amperage uh, controller as um, uh, these amps increase. Um, uh, as far as simulating how the hand cycle would perform, I always actually picked the full recumbent bike. Um, uh, this, I think, impacts the, the drag that you get. Um, the full recumbent is a bit lower. Uh, as, a, as a full upright mountain bike, um, you're, the wind actually slows you down more. So that, that reduces the efficiency at high speeds. And then, you know, I weigh a little bit more. So I'm probably about 264 uh, with the full rig, including battery and motor, etc. Um, at which point you could see that's going to lower the, the, the overall speed. It's going to lower the efficiency. It's going to um, increase the temperature of the motor. Uh, but this this crystallite motor that I, I I ended up deciding to get seems to um, be able to do everything I needed to do. It can um, uh, take me up the hill uh, for a significant distance or at a very high speed. Um, it has a, a decent top speed on the flats. And uh, one other way that I also looked at these charts is actually going uh, downhill. So you could change the grade to a, a, a negative. Uh, grade and if you simulate it, um, uh, you're actually going to get uh, a, a top speed. Um, above this speed, the motor is going to start braking uh, because you're going to be generating so many amps and watts that are actually going to be going back into your battery. Um, so, for instance, if I had a 36 volt battery, um, uh, uh, this top speed would only be 26 miles per hour, which is fairly slow. Um, I don't necessarily want to go uh, the full, um, what was it, uh, 32 miles per hour on a downhill, but um, uh, this is something that you can set in your controller. I could always set the top speed as something lower. Um, setting it as something higher would be, I think, difficult. So um, this was kind of another factor that I looked at when deciding which motor to get. I looked at uh, the efficiency on flats, so for example, commuting to work. I looked at the efficiency for going up hills and how uh, the motor may overheat. So let me give you an example of the geared hub motor, the Bafang G310. This is a fact that uh, dissuaded me from getting that motor. If I go up a seven and a half degree incline, you could see in 25 minutes, the motor is going to overheat. Um, uh, so, and that's even at 40% throttle. If I was going at hundred percent throttle, I would overheat in just eight minutes. Um, so even though you get higher torque, you have to reduce, um, the throttle so much 
um, that you're actually not going to be going that fast um, with these geared hub motors because they're going to tend to overheat. And uh, uh, you'll also see the efficiencies are actually uh, slightly lower, um, which I was a little bit surprised at than the direct drive motor. But um, uh, yeah, that's the trade off that you get with a geared hub motor. So uh, using the simulator, it was a very, very useful tool to help me decide which motor to get.